Big Z Reviews. Hi, my name's Brandon Zardishny, but you can call me Big Z, and today I'm doing a book review for uh, Dungeon Crawler Carl, and that's also the name of the first book and the name of the series, um, by uh, author Matt uh, Dineman. And uh, this is a book that, like, it's not necessarily one I would normally be attracted to, but um, I had... Like, in um, I, a YouTuber's uh, best books that he read in 2023, I was watching it, and he, and his number one book that he went, read was Dungeon Crawler Carl. And as, like, just based on that, like, on his list, he had some other books that I loved. So I was like, I'll, go, I'll download it on Kindle. And I know a lot of times, especially if it's a Kindle book, I might not get to it. Like, I have, like, I have, um... A bookshelf, to, uh, multiple bookshelves full of books that I bought but haven't gone around the reading. And I have even more in my Kindle. Because like, if they're not, at least if I buy a physical version of the book, it's kind of like sitting on a bookshelf staring at me. But like, it's even less so when it's in my phone or in my Kindle. Or sometimes I just won't get around to it. But um, I kind of, same time, I was, uh, I just finished my reread of the Aragon series. And, uh, like, also, like, I, like, I did review for it. That was the last book review I did. But, um, I, like, really enjoyed the series, rereading them again. They're not, like, amazing books, but I, you know, I, sometimes I get a bit locked in, like, after reading a whole series in, of, of, in one world. Like, my brain is still kind of in that world. So I really wanted something completely different to read. So I was like, what about that um, lit RPG? I think it's lit literature RPG, you know, like essentially the characters level up, you know, like in a video game, but it's like in like a book format. Like I was like, I, I know that's what it was. And I was like, ah, maybe that, that's something completely different. And I, I sounds like I could enjoy it. And when I first started it, I was like, oh, I don't know. But then I, I once I started going, like, I absolutely loved it. I'm like just now I'm finishing up book six, and I'm now all caught up on his books. Like he's been he's been writing them for a couple years, but now like um like I'm now completely caught up, and they're like a really interesting mix of you know fantasy and science fiction, where essentially like this um this in this universe. There was this uh, race of aliens called the Primals, and they seeded worlds, you know, across the universe. And that um, the, the other later on, like they disappeared, but like later on, all the different alien species, you know, found their technology and have taken advantage of it, like using wormholes and using like macro AI, which like control like world engines. And that they part of the what their runs their economy and what runs their the how the universe runs is that they host um, an event, you know, every couple years in the, one of the planets that were seeded by by the primals, and they harvest that planet. And the way they harvest that planet is that. Um, like oh, at a certain day, unless they have have space lawyers that get them to not do it, and they have them join the the galactic civilization, which they don't know how to do, and they don't tell them. They like every, every everyone that has a roof over their head, like uh, the infrastructure. Anyone anyone with roof overhead when they're when they're being farmed, like collapses. And be sucked into the world to be processed for elements and nutrients and whatever the you know, body mass and all the different um, you know metals and all the different infrastructure of, of the world, and then anyone that's not under a roof is given two options, and that's to um, join the crawl. The like each 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 time each uh, event is held by like a different is run by a different galactic race. And, like, some of them have more futuristic stuff. Some of them have a more, like, uh, a fantasy role-playing video game world. And the ones that are running uh, Earthcrawl are, like, these little fish people. 
and they ha they love you know the an RPG world and and essentially if you if you go into the dungeon you are a member of this like essentially it's like the Hunger Games plus it's like um you know like a like a live show you know like a Truman show where like the universe universe can tur can uh, tune in to each different uh, human crawler as they journey in this world and they try to go they're like 18 levels to this game where like if, if essentially if you if they beat all 18 levels they can win back their world but like no one's ever done it no one's ever made it even like past like the 13th floor but if you make it to the 10th floor you get like exit packages like you can like you get a lawyer and you can um like you can get like they can give you stuff to become a citizen or to work for a couple hundred years as like an assistant in the game, a manager for the next crawler, like to help the crawler survive, and like but like this, but essentially that the other option if you don't want to do the dungeon, you can just live on the, try to survive on what's left of planet Earth, you know. But um, of course, essentially, your main character is is Carl, and he has just had. This is like a little bit after Christmas. He had just broken up with his girlfriend, his longtime girlfriend, because like she, he she was going on a work trip, but it turned out she was going to the Bahamas with her ex boyfriend, and the the picture of of him on Instagram. So they've broken up, but he's at home in their apartment, and with her cat. There's a Princess Donut, who is like a, an award-winning, like a, the best in show, like a cat show. Okay, she has won the most ribbons any cat has ever won. But like, there's a lot of drama there, but the, like, because um, he's, he was like thinking about, you know, he really likes the cat too, even though it was her cat. And she was planning on, like, she's getting older now, but she was planning on, like, um, selling the cat to be, you know, to go be a breeder and get a new cat to get, start doing shows. But he wants to, he's thinking about stealing the cat, even though it's probably worth, you know, thousands of dollars. But before that happened, like, this, the crawl happens. And, and the only reason that they survived is because, I guess it's like in the middle of winter and they're like in Seattle and the cat that jumps out the window to see uh, Ferdinand like the the local tomcat in the area and like he goes out into the cold with just his um his boxers he, like he goes out in the cold to catch the cat in just his boxers and a coat and that like that's when you know the world ends and he goes into the dungeon in just his underwear but then he, because he's like the first crawler to enter the dungeon with a cat he gets like a special loot box like it's like a cat like a, a pet treat that gives the cat sentience and the turret so like the cat is like the second the main character so essentially they're like they're the, the the party like carl and princess donut and they're like uh, going on a journey and going the, down each floor trying to survive and killing all the monsters and having to fight and kill other humans and survive and he wants to try to break the, this game and, you know, like, do something and change the, change the, the universe, potentially. And, you know, it's funny, like, I, it, I really enjoyed this. Like, it's, it's surprisingly funny. Like, it definitely some of the, is it a little bit corny, but, like, I love the, you know, the Princess Donut. She is hilarious. Like, she, and, you know, Carl's are like, God damn it, Donut. You know, like, and then there's also the aspect of the universe watching them, like, especially they're like early on in the early books. Like, they have like the view count and the favorites, and that's like the more the people like you, like the more prizes you get. And there's also the whole thing. There's like an artificial intelligence that's running the dungeon, and the and the there might be something weird with one because like the the uh, Kuliton or the like the mud skippers is what everyone, the racist thing that they call these aliens that are running this crawl. Like they're having a lot of strife at home. There's like a civil war brewing and they're kind of about to go bankrupt. And they're hoping that this crawl for Earth 
is like gonna save them. But um, they may have maybe cut some corners setting up this uh, this dungeon, so that like then the art the artificial the macro artificial intelligence the baby AI that they put in to run this the this world this crawl might have been used at a, a theme park world then they might have accidentally killed people at the theme park world they had, instead of being decommissioned the they sold it to these people to quotine to uh to and they know what they're doing with it but they're using it as they're, they're supposed to be um the completely pure like never been used baby ai is to set up this uh, this for the the dungeon and essentially it's supposed to be like once they get to like level 12 like the, the the AI starts going crazy and taking control, but definitely right from the beginning, this AI is a little weird. Let's just say it's um it has a bit of a foot fetish, and when uh, Carl goes in there with just his jacket, a pair of boxers, and his bare feet, and he's killing monsters with his bare feet, stomping on some of like the the weaker monsters at the start, the dungeon rumbles and and there's always like this like. It's like oh, like he likes he likes the uh, he likes Carl's feet, the AI. So like there's like give this gives him some like preferential treatment, and it's just it's a lot of funny stuff that I've like the whole time like the AI is like describing everything, and it's like a video game. They have like they have an endless inventory. I thought it was funny. that's like a lot of reference video. It's like in the, in the game that's less you do it, you always just grab everything eventually. Like you're over encumbered, and now I got damn this one. You you can't be over encumbered in this, but I love it too. Like like because that's like um, he Carl like he so he finds that like he when he complained about stuff, he's like it, the AI is listening and is complaining that I really need to find some pants and some shoes, and he never can, and then he starts giving like buffs for that. Like he's like if he takes care of his feet, they're like invulnerable. And that, like, they can, like, stronger, and he has attacks that are stronger if they're done bare feet. And he has, he gets, like, a special pair of boxers where, like, they're only, you can only be the only item worn on your your, your lower half or something. So it's, like, messing with them the whole time. And it's very tongue-in-cheek, and it's just very fun. And also, like, it gets the whole idea of, like, you know, the, the loot box. They are they are addictive. They did like the looter shooters and the, like different like Diablo games, and like like would they when you get loot from things, it's addictive and leveling up. Like I kind of it got that itch. Reading a I never really had that like reading a book. It like hit that little itch that like that primal thing in you where that you like the um makes your brain go burr when number goes up. You know, <laughs> or they get the new item in the loot box. That's the really cool loot, the legendary loot. Like, and and it works. And I love to, like, in some books, like, like in the Hunger Games, you know, once you do the Hunger Games, like, the first book is the best, and then, like, what do you do now? Oh, well, um, they go back for another Hunger Games. Okay, and what now? Well, I guess the whole world is a Hunger Game. You know, but then this one, you know, each book is, like, another level. Although like the the first book is two the two levels, and I think the one book the, the one time they skip a level for shenanigans occur, and like the the most interesting levels are like level three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, but like right now they're uh they're at level eight, so we don't know what's gonna happen at level nine. There's level nine like the big faction war, and that's um coming out. I don't know. I'm not sure when that'll come out, but I'm looking forward to it. And it's, I'm really a lot of times I don't really know what's gonna happen. Like it's surprising. Although I found like the writing, the writing isn't the best. You know, it's definitely it's very readable, but it's not. You're not reading like fine literature. But I mean, it's still it's very a very quick read, and like I really kind of like a really like like enjoyable read, like a light read. But I do found that it's kind of like almost limited first person the viewpoint is just kind of interesting because like you're in his you're in Carl's mind and like you know but at the same time the one thing he, I, the, the, Matt Dineman definitely overuses the 
and this is our plan. And then the, they don't tell you the plan, and then you have to witness it. Like, the, the one book, like, in, in uh, book three or four, I think, uh, or, uh, where, like, they did it so much. But the, they, they do it a lot. I mean, I understand they don't want to have a whole planning thing and then, and then have you also have to watch it when it happens, read it when it happens. But at the same time, like, it happens so often where it feels like you don't know exactly what Carl's thinking. Like, sometimes he'll do something and it's fun and it's, like, really impulsive and, like, whoa, it's so cool to see what's happening. At the same time, it's like, I feel like I'm just along for the ride and I'm not really like, in his head. So, like, I mean, it kind of works as just, like, almost like it'd be, like, a graphic novel. Like, you're... Like, it feels like it should be third person, almost. But it's first person. That's the weirdest part of it. Like, I don't feel like I'm truly in his head sometimes. But other times, I do. Like, other times, he's really thinking about going over and, like... And his mind, but other times, he... You complete he, Like, he likes to leave the reader completely... In, in the in the dark about what's going to happen and this and this more it might be more thrilling that way but at the same time it feels like I'm not truly with him I, I don't know if I'm I, you know if you know what I'm saying like it, it's it's interesting if limited first person you know like and almost like I think at one point he breaks the fourth wall like er, in the second or third book and like he says you, you, I'm not gonna you're not gonna hear about that or something like that but most of the time. It's not like he's writing a book about his experience. Most of the time, it feels like you're with him as it happens, and that. But at the same time, like it's you don't get everything. But you know, I still I'm there for the ride, and I'm I I really I really enjoyed it. It's something completely different, and like a mixture of sci-fi and fantasy, and how like the whole universe loves Princess Donut, and she's like really interested in, like like the social media aspect, like. Like that, that's a play the part of it, and it's interesting, like an interesting look about how, you know, this essentially their big media is the the games, and that like you know, we, like billions and trillions and quadrillions of people of of beings are watching these people in like futuristic ways that they go through these horrible things while they're actually dying brutally. And like that, like the whole time he's gonna try to blow it all up. And it's it's really fun. I mean, it can be gory at times and violent, but it can be really funny. And I I like it a lot. You know, it's it's way better than I would expect when I started. Like it's not something like I I read a couple of like R, lit RPG RPG books, but it's not something that I generally love. But I really enjoyed this, and it's I would definitely recommend it. You know, Dungeon Crawler Carl is really addic an addictive read that I enjoyed a lot. I'd probably give it like a 9 out of 10. But uh, thanks for watching, and if you want to see more of me, you can subscribe down below. Thanks. Mm -hmm.